Back in the day, something like 9,000 years ago, when my grandpa was still in college, a Mexican guy was doing barbecue with his neighbors. In Mexico, they had meat, some veggies, all the good stuff, but he wanted to have his barbecue better than his neighbor last week. So he wanted to show off his new Teosinte cooking skills from a Gordon Ramirez masterclass. He harvested some fresh Teosinte from the shrub in his backyard, threw it on the grill and did the Gordon Ramirez magic. Then he served it to all of his neighbors with a smirk on his face. But that smirk quickly disappeared. After his guests tasted the rock hard Teosinte grains, they weren't really pleased. They complained about how few seeds there are on the cob, about the texture and the dryness of the crop and some of them even broke their teeth trying to chew the seeds. Anyways, needless to say, our Mexican guy was pretty pissed and disappointed in how the Teosinte ruined his barbecue. But he wasn't a pussy. He was a real man, saw the potential of this crop and set out to do something about it. He took into consideration all the complaints of his guests and according to that chose the most desirable cop on the shrub. He broke the husk protecting the seeds, sowed them, chose the most desirable cop on the new shrub and repeated this process over and over. He was quite successful with breeding the Teosinte plant and towards the end of his life his shrubs were consistently yielding one more kernel per cop than the shrubs in the neighborhood. But although he had a successful career, he didn't have any kids, so his life's work was destined to vanish after his death. Luckily, his neighbor's kid was into agriculture himself and he also saw the potential of this crop. So he selected the most desirable cop on the new shrub and... You know how this story continues. But then, at around 5,500 years before Christ, the Mexicans were quite confident in their Teosinte, which was already somewhat different from the original Teosinte, cultivation skills. So they've shipped it to their friends in South America, and it traveled for something like 1,000 years until it spread throughout the civilizations in Amazonia. And here it gets interesting, because modern-day Mexico was the first domestication center for corn. But due to the cross-pollination between the original Teosinte and the improved varieties, the process was really slow. But when it got to the Amazonia, where there wasn't any inhibiting factor, the breeding went much faster. So in the latest research, scientists found that in South America, Corn similar to what we know today was developed centuries before they achieved it in Mexico. And then conquistadoras came. They didn't like the plant at first, but since they were running out of food, corn was the only option. And to the Europeans, it tasted... Good. So they brought it back to Europe, some other parts of the world, and to the US, which quickly became the number one country in corn production, and still is to this day. But there was a problem. The corn from different states wasn't anything alike, and nobody liked that. So trade boards intervened and wanted the growers to grow a unified variety. And, in 1893, at the World's Columbian Exposition, James L. Reed introduced his Yellow Dent variety and won the Blue Ribbon. And today, around 1200 million tons of corn is being produced each year, which makes it one of the three most grown crops in the world, with the majority of the commercially grown varieties being derived from Reed's Yellow Dent. So there you have the evolution of corn from antiquity till now. Thanks for watching.